Uh, it has increased her popularity with liberals. She's sort of seen as this progressive fighter. Joe Biden's pick for OMB director Neera Tanden is running into some trouble. Joe Manchin has already come out to say that he will not vote to confirm her, meaning that Democrats need a Republican vote to get her nomination through. Not likely to happen. Now, what I want to focus on here is how the mainstream press is covering this. There is a segment on MSNBC that labeled Neera Tandon as a progressive fighter. Just <laughs> completely, uncritically regurgitating what they are being told by the White House. So let me play this for you and discuss why this is a problem. So, you know, I asked that same question about Tandon to someone close to the White House. You know, why double down on this? Why not you know, the, the, people are privately acknowledging they don't have a 50th vote somewhere. There was some talk about Senator Portman maybe getting behind her at some point. You know, that does not appear to be happening. Uh, there's no indication that she has enough votes to get confirmed. So why not just pull the nomination? The person said to me, you know, there's not really any upside for the White House in doing that at this point. Maybe it could move the process along by putting someone else up there, uh, you know, but it would just upset her supporters. It would upset progressives and the liberal wing of the party. And their case, too, was that for Tandon, who could also withdraw her name, you know, this has given her high profile. Uh, it has increased her popularity with liberals. She's sort of seen as this progressive fighter, um, you know, and, and it's just getting her name out there and, and getting her some visibility. So their take was there wasn't really any upside in doing that at this point. Just absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. This shows you one of the one of the serious issues, one of the main issues with mainstream press, how they operate. Instead of being journalists, instead of questioning what they are being told, they are simply repeating what they are told. So they're basically being stenographers as opposed to being journalists. And this issue, I mean, this goes deep. This is an issue with the way that journalists are often taught to discuss both sides as opposed to looking at objective reality and discussing what the objective reality is. Sure, mention what both sides' positions are, but then bring up the actual facts and what those are. They always value neutrality over actual ob uh, objectivity. The other issue, of course, there's a lack of investment into real journalism. So, you know, people like, uh, let me get her name just so I get this right. Uh, this is senior White House reporter um, Shannon Pettypiece. So it's very likely she has limited resources. So basically, if there was an ability here to tell the objective fact, she doesn't have a lot of time to actually do the research and represent that objective fact. So that, that's also an issue here. So it isn't. This isn't completely on Shannon Petty piece here. It's also on how she's taught in journalism school, and also on the lack of resources that are often given, or, or not given to um, individuals like this. But to just uncritically claim that Neera Tandon is a progressive fighter, that liberals would be really bothered. Oh, again, this conflation with the idea that liberals are progressives, but. She also said progressives. The idea that progressives would be bothered by Neera Tandon having to withdraw or the White House having to withdraw her nomination and replace her. No. In fact, let me show you. <laughs> let me show you something. Uh, first, I want to give credit here to Case Study QB for finding that clip. But um, Roots Action here. This is a progressive organization that worked to vote Trump out in swing states. Now they are challenging Biden on his conservative positions as well, including nominating Neera Tandon. So they've been working, they have this campaign, hashtag reject uh, Tandon, trending nationally to try and get um, Bernie Sanders to reject Neera Tandon. This is a actual progressive organization building a movement to reject Neera Tandon. Again, <laughs> the idea that Neera Tandon is a progressive and that progressives are, are unhappy with Joe Manchin um, not supporting her is just completely absurd. Now, Joe Manchin's reasonings, because he is a conservative Democrat, are also absurd. Uh, we don't really care about Neera Tandon's mean tweets. It's not about individual tweets. It's about how she has operated as an individual in Washington with the Center for American Progress. Let me go uh, through some of this data. Again, I've covered a lot of this before, but just to, you know, if you're new to this, so you understand that Neera Tandon 
is a, a essentially a, a tool of the corporate establishment. Here at The Nation, this is an article from 2013. A confidential cap donor pitch I obtained describes the business alliance as a channel for engagement with the corporate community that provides the opportunity to collaborate on common interests. Before I get any deeper, the business alliance, this was a part of, of the Center for American Progress, where Neera Tandon uh, ran. So she ran Center for American Progress in 2011, but has always been a part of it since the beginning. And they had this idea of the business alliance, a way to raise money for the Center for American Progress, a, a think tank, while <laughs> obviously developing the, the, developing these very close relationships with corporate donors. So it says here, um, it offers three membership levels with the perks to top donors, $100,000 and up, including private meetings with CAP experts and executives, roundtable discussions with Hill and national leaders, and briefings on CAP reports relevant to your unique interests. Clearly, this was a way to get corporate money in and then using those discussions, the interests of what these corporate donors are pushing, use those interests, the, those um, those ideas for policy and push that on the White House. This is why they would have private meetings. What else would this money be for? <laughs> like, why would these corporations be willing to give this much money to a think tank if they weren't going to have some power over, at the time, Barack Obama? Obviously, this was a part of it. So that's what this is all about. These, these roundtable discussions with Hill and national leaders showing, hey, if you give us money, you're going to have some influence in Washington. So to give you an idea of some of those donors, they had uh, Comcast, Walmart, General Motors, Pacific Gas and Electric, General Electric, Boeing and Lockheed. Though it doesn't appear on the list, the University of Phoenix, a private um, uh, college, was also a donor. So, yeah, um, this is... And, you know, we can go on and on. They also had donors. This is an article from uh, 2013. Uh, Goldman Sachs, Wells Fargo, Coca-Cola, Citigroup, American Beverage Association, Comcast, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Webster Manufacturer, Walmart. Again, this is how CAP operated. Operating under the guise of being a progressive organization, Center for American Progress, but in reality, working hand in hand with corporate interests to push corporate friendly policy. And this is why people... Actual progressives, people on the left, don't want near attendant in this position of OMB director. And, you know, I can go over more that I've covered in the past. Tandon uh, uh, and her Center for American Progress pushed cuts to Social Security after the 2010 uh, midterms. So, again, supporting cuts to Social Security, another uh, conservative policy that, Nan that Tandon backed. And if you have any more questions <laughs> about if she's progressive... Neera Tandon removed the word progressive from her bio and replaced it with liberal. So it once said progressive. Now it says liberal. <laughs> I, I don't even know what else there is to say here. Um, again, for me, as I've covered Tandon in the past a number of times, this is mostly about uh, this video, mostly about the media. Just unquestioning uh, anything that comes out of the White House or what they're told seeing their job more as representing both sides as opposed to actually looking at the reality, researching, doing some work to investigate, to see what the actual objective reality is and representing that. But this is just, you know, a small piece uh, in understanding how mainstream press operates when it comes to their political commentary.